Jesus mighty name we are praying. Amen. Please be seated in his wonderful presence. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, I, I bring you greetings from the city of David, of RCG. Amen. And of course, you know that um, that's where the love of God reigns, where dreams come true, where legends like you and I, phenomenal people like you and I are born, and we have testimonies every day. And I bring you greetings from my sweetheart, my honeysuckle, my choco milo, my cutie patoti, my azuka betito, Pastor Shiju. Um, and I must salute your leader, my friend, my brother. I call him Lexi Clark Monaco Adola, Pastor Leke, and all the supporters and all the uh, people that um, put this meeting together. I pray that God will bless us in Jesus' mighty name. I've been given a topic to talk about, um, and that is. Um, Building solid relationships. Building solid relationships. And incidentally, my sweetheart and I, we have written about 17 books, including uh, books on relationship. One is Finding True Love in a Love Recession, and her own is Treasure Seekers. So from time to time, I'll refer to some of the things that are there just to save our time. So defining our terms. A relationship is an emotional or other connection uh, between people. It can be a boy and girl relationship. It can be husband and wife. It can be teacher-student relationship. But one thing you need to realize is that a relationship is a ship. It is taking you somewhere. So it's very, very important. And a solid relationship is a lasting relationship built on biblical principles. My prayer at the end of this session, we will know how to build solid relationships in Jesus' mighty name. People of God, it's so clear. The Bible says that two are better than one. One can put to flight a thousand, two, ten thousand. So it's important. And we have many kinds of relationships in scriptures. We have Mary and Joseph, Naomi and Ruth, Mordecai and Esther. Elijah and Elisha, and if you look at the lives of all these people, you see that they added value to each other. So relationships are very, very important. So if there's any relationship that you are in that is not adding value to you, then it's subtracting from you. You are hanging out with the wrong set of people. It can truncate your destiny. It can divert your destiny and cause you to lose your innocence like the story of Dinah and if you find yourself in an unholy relationship or a relationship that's not adding to you, you need to cut it off, everybody say cut it off, yeah you need to cut it off, uh, but when you're cutting it off make sure there's no strife, you know like Abraham and Lot they shut the door gently, they didn't slam the door because of course you know that later Lot needed the help of Abraham. So when you are cutting it off, cut it off with sense because it can be business, it can be anything that will come out of it. It needs to be amicable. One thing you need to realize is that relationships are vital to our existence and the fulfillment of destiny. So this session will address a couple of things. Those hoping to find a true, godly, solid relationship will tell you about where to find it and how to prepare yourself. And of course, men are traditionally hunters. It's the man that finds, that goes after the woman. And these first two points will be taken together. Then, after you have found the true love, what are you going to do with it? There is what you call KYP. Know your partner before you say, I do. And for those that are already married, we know that many marriages are challenged. We're going to give you some tips that would keep the fire of love burning so that you can have a thriving, solid relationship. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 
Now the first question is, where are the men? Where are the men? As a sign of the end times, the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 4 and verse 1 that it's going to be a ratio of 7 to 1. And that is actually happening. Seven women to one man. And that is a problem. You know, there's a United Nations statistics in 2019, and they gave a demographic report. They said about 7.8 billion people are in the world right now. There are about 8 billion right now. And listen to these statistics. 5.6 billion are women. 2.2 billion are men. You know, so that syncs with what the Bible tells us, that there are more women than are men. Then out of the 2.2 billion men, 1 billion are already married, 130 million are in prison, 70 million are mentally ill, so you just have 1 billion left. Out of the 1 billion, 50% are jobless, 3% are gay, 5% are Catholic priests, 10% are your relatives, and 33% are above 60. So there is a problem. And that's why this session is very important. But find, you will find your own bone of your bone and the flesh of your flesh in Jesus' mighty name. So the Bible says in Proverbs 18.22, Proverbs 18.22, he says, whosoever findeth a wife finds a good thing and receives favor from the Lord. So, the popular question, how do I go about finding the right partner? You know, even the wisest man in the world, Solomon, he had 700 wives and 300 concubines. Even him, in Proverbs 30, 18 to 19, Proverbs 30, 18 to 19, the NLT version. He says, there are a lot of things he doesn't understand. And one of it is understanding a woman. After 1,000 women, you still don't understand. And that's from the wisest person in the world. So we need help. And I know that God will help us in Jesus' mighty name. How do I find? Hey, God is in charge. God is the chief connector. Let's just clap for Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, the Bible says in Proverbs 19.21, the message version, it says, we keep brainstorming options and plans, but God's purpose prevails. And Jeremiah 10 and verse 23, message version, we can't run our lives or take charge of our lives. You know, if you look at the way God connected a lot of people in scriptures, either to their destiny or to their wives, you see that you really can't second guess God. God is wiser than anyone. You think he's going up, but he's going down. So it's better to just first put your destiny, your plans in the hands of God. Nothing happens to us as Christians by accident. Your life is programmed. Indeed, I would say it's been pre-programmed before you were born. The Bible says that Jeremiah before you were born, I knew you and I knew what you are supposed to become. You are supposed to become a prophet to the nations. So if you are a doctor, a lawyer, no. It's good to be a doctor, a lawyer, but until you do what I've asked you to do, you have not succeeded. Your life purpose. So all these things are pre-programmed by God. For example, Saul, he was going to be a king. How did God do it? He went looking for the lost asses of his father. So you really can't know the ways of God unless he reveals it to you. And that goes through scriptures. How David was connected to the throne, you know? Even though he was anointed, there was no way he could be connected to the throne unless that battle with Goliath. But even as a single, before you get married, you need to be secure in your singleness. Singleness is not a curse. 
Neither is it a fixation. Don't put your life on hold just because you are not yet married. You will marry in Jesus' mighty name. Some people are obsessed. They are obsessed. To them is a do or die affair. They want to do it by hook or crook. And most of those people, they end up saying, ah, had I known. May you not regret any decision you make in Jesus' mighty name. People of God, Adam was secure in his singleness. In Genesis 2.18, he was single, alone with God. Marriage is God's idea anyway. It was God that said, it's time. I know this guy is lonely. I'll find him a suitable wife. And God brought Eve. So leave the burden with God. He knows your down sitting and your uprising. And at the right time, we bring the right person in Jesus' mighty name. For some people, marriage can be an idol. But the Bible tells you that before you marry, 1 Corinthians 7, 32 to 33, 1 Corinthians 7, 32 to 33 says, look, get busy doing the things of God. And that's why I'm excited about the pastor's seat forum. It gets you engaged doing the things of God while you are waiting for the move of God. Let's just celebrate every one of us here that are here. Amen. Hallelujah. People of God, in whatever situation you find yourself right now, just adjust and smell the roses. Don't transfix your life because we know that all things, good and bad, work together for good to those that are called by God according to his purpose. So, Adam trusted God for Eve. He didn't give God any vital statistics. They must be tall, must be short, must be slim, must be rich. Uh, I want to marry a top dog in the oil industry. None of that. By the time God finished with him, he woke up to see the most gorgeous woman on earth, Eve. Let's clap for God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. The next thing I want to talk about is platforms. You need platforms. You know, some people, they've missed the bus. They've missed opportunities. But you see, every day in life and in any endeavor, God creates platforms. What are platforms? Opportunities for us, which you must take the advantage of. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 10, 25, it says, do not forsake the assembling of the righteous. That's why I just want to celebrate the Pastor Seed Forum also, amen, the family, and as you hop up together and do stuff together, God will make a way for you in Jesus' mighty name. This is a platform. Other platforms that people connect themselves and see themselves are school, uni, the workplace. Some people meet inside the elevator and they connect shopping mall, cinema, supermarket, the airport, bus stop, gym, queue, traffic. I know the story of someone that had a good car, but each time it's coming to camp, you will enter the bus. Because if you are driving your car, you are alone. But if you are inside the bus, there are many opportunities and platforms. And lo and behold, that was how they met. And today they are married to the glory of God. Praise the name of the Lord. So parties, weddings, amen, hallelujah. And because of COVID, we set up the online Connect Now platform, amen. That is also a platform. But when you get to your platform, like this platform, you need to be strategic. Like I looked around, you know, I don't know how many of you are married or single, you know, but when you come to this kind of forum, you need to be strategically seated. You want to marry, you are sitting with other women. It's not going to happen. You want to marry, you are sitting with other men. How can it happen? Or you are sitting with competition. Rebecca didn't have any competition. You are sitting with somebody that's finer than you. It's competition. We have to be strategically seated so that when they come, it will be easy to find you. Amen? You'll be found in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the name of the Lord. Women, you need to know that men are very visual. So, how are you dressed today? Are you dressed anyhow? Have you done your hair? Eh? 
Are you wearing something nice? Amen. Are you smelling nice? Also, men do like this. <laughs> Aha. If you move back, then you need to go and use a mouthwash. Because when you say hello, the girl will run. Amen. God will deliver you in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the name of the Lord. So, for the hunters, the men, what are you looking for? It is the man that traditionally must make the first move. The Bible says in 1 John 4, 19, he says, we love him because he first loved us. Jesus made the first move loving us. He is the head. And we need to just follow the pattern. So, traditionally, but you see, you need to remember that these are the last days and occasionally, when the situation permits, you need to remember the Ruth anointing. Okay? Ruth met Boaz halfway. So don't just say that eh, the men must make the move. The men must make. These are the last days. Amen? I'm sure you have read about Kate Middleton. You know, Kate Middleton that married Prince William in England. She had originally gained admission to Edinburgh University. Then she now learned that Prince William. She waited one year to enter into St. Andrews. It was a strategic move. It was a Ruth anointed. And today she's married to the bone of the bone and the heart of heart. So please, I'm not saying women should throw themselves, but hey, let's just be strategic. That's all I'll say. A word is enough for the wise. And please, for men, it's important. You must marry a born-again Christian. And that's for the two of you. Don't marry a devil. Genesis 26, 34 to 35. Genesis 26, 34 to 35. Esau married two devils. In verse 35, the people he married, they are not born again. He said they made life bitter and a grief of mind and spirit for Isaac and Rebekah. They are devils. You will not marry devils in Jesus. You cannot afford to be unequally yoked. It's not going to happen. It's not going to work. Amen? So, you want to hunt. What does it mean to woo? When I say hunt, we're not hunting for animals. It's just figurative. Amen? So, to hunt means to woo, to pursue, to seek, to chase, to follow hard. David said, my soul follows close behind you, hard after you. Amen? So, the Bible tells us in Proverbs 18.22, it says, whosoever finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. A woman is a good thing. A godly woman is a good thing. Is a treasure. The Bible says that her price is far above rubies. Let's clap for the women that are here. Amen. Hallelujah. And the ruby is very ruby is what is on the crown queen of England. You can look at it. Amen. Women are valuable. Amen. They are like the dollar bill. You crumple the dollar bill, it is still valuable. You throw it down, it is still valuable. Amen. You stamp on it, it is still valuable. May our women not lose value in Jesus' mighty name. So, the treasure that the hunter is seeking will motivate him to hunt. We were the treasure that God was seeking. He went through all kinds of things to catch us. He went to the cross. He was focused. You remember the parable of the lost sheep? If something is valuable, you go after it. A treasure is something that is worth a lot. Sometimes they don't obviously look like treasures. Many of us are like diamonds in the rough. When you polish them, then they begin to shine. That's what the Bible says in Psalm 144 verse 12. Psalm 144 verse 12 says, when we polish ourselves, then we begin to shine in the likeness of a palace. May our men and women be polished in Jesus' mighty name. Some women say, I don't agree. They say that men are mentally 
some men are mentally lazy that's why they stand in front of you they like you but they just don't know what to say they just say boo, boo. that must end today in Jesus mighty name a man must be prepared amen people of God Joseph was prepared to meet Pharaoh he put himself in order even the Bible tells us in Amos 4 2 it says prepare to meet with God you need to be prepared Okay, and I'll talk more about preparation, amen. And I'll tell you some, 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 some things. If you buy the book on love that I have here, my own preparation and hunting skills is in page 77 to 78. There, I met my sweetheart uh, 42 years ago when she was, yes, she was just 16, amen. Yes, and um, it was at a party that was our own platform. So I was prepared for whatever the night had in store for me. And thank God that I prepared. Today, the rest is history. Amen? So when you are attracted to someone, that's to be some kind of attraction, okay? It evokes some interest, a liking. And there's a pool, a magnetic pool, like sugar and ants. The king and star, Rachel. Yes, amen. People of God, there has to be some kind of so some kind of attraction. But you must also submit to the leading of the Holy Spirit. He is the chief connector, the servant of Abraham. He committed his plan to God. When they said, Go and look for a wife for my son Isaac, he prayed to God, and God divinely orchestrated everything. The Bible says in Psalm 37, 5, commit their ways unto the Lord and trust him and he will bring it to pass in Jesus mighty name as we commit this project even unto God God will bring it to pass in Jesus mighty name people of God you know beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder there are different likes some people like them tall some people like them short all kinds of things and in various countries might not be attractive to be for example, if you want to catch a British mouse, you put cheese there. But if you come to Nigeria, you put cheese there. The mouse will not come. But if you put shower, eh, fish, you will catch it. Amen. Hallelujah. So you need the right bait. Amen. So what is attracting A might not attract B. But your own God will bring in Jesus' mighty name. Pray and trust the Holy Spirit and he will even help you in Jesus' mighty name. But we must not forget God's standard of beauty. God's standard of beauty is the inner beauty. And you can see that in 1 Peter 3, verse 1 to 6, NLT. The inner beauty. It's so important. Character. Amen? A good and quiet spirit. Amen? It is precious to God. So as you are looking at the external, which is important, you must also concentrate on what is inside. God will guide you in Jesus mighty name praise the name of the Lord you know in in Yoruba language they say do you want to marry a uh, Suru lady eh? someone that you will be patient and the reward is at the end amen or alone should go that one is food is ready amen a ready-made man you need to be very very careful because all that glitters is not gold. All you need is someone who has potential, who is not lazy, who knows where he's going. Amen. And the Bible says in Job 8:7, it says, even though the beginning was small, the latter end will greatly increase. My prayer is that you will find the bone of your bone and the flesh of your flesh in Jesus' mighty name. Anybody that is a surulary, there must be potential with effort and confidence. And everybody has a potential. Everybody has a talent. My prayer is that whatever your talent is, God will help you to realize it and it will work for you in Jesus' mighty name. So, hunter, what are some of the attributes of a hunter? You want to marry? You want to go after a woman? What are the attributes? Number one, 
you must be born again. Number two, you must be willing to leave and cleave. When you marry God first, your wife second, all others third. Then you must know what you want in a woman. You can't just say, give me any woman. No, that will not work. It's like going to the airport and say, they ask you, where, where are you going? You say, just take me. Take me where? Are you going to the Bible or Lagos? Where, where are you going? So you must know what you want. You must be focused and you need to have a goal. Focus is attention to something, concentrating on something. It requires effort, challenging all your energy in one direction to achieve a specific goal. It works in business. It works when you want to marry. Amen? Without focus, visions and dreams are not attainable. So you need focus. The Bible says in Exodus 9.10, it says whatever your hand finds to do, do it veritably. My prayer is that God will give you focus in Jesus' mighty name. If a hunter goes to the bush and sees an antelope, a boar, and a rat, if he runs after all of them, he can't get anyone. You must focus on one person. So for those that want to marry, I hope that today you have already focused. You know what you want and you've looked around and God will help you and open your eyes in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, Paul says, this one thing I do, not I will do. So today we are going to do that thing that we have focused on and you will be successful in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, a footballer, he's going to the goal, but he will dribble to the right, dribble to the left, but he knows where he is going. You need to have two strategies as a hunter if you want to get next to a woman. The first one is the Russian tank attack. You rush in. In those days in Ife, great Ife. Amen? We rush. We call it October rush. But many a times, casualties. Then, when you meet a brick wall with your Russian tank attack, then, if it's not working, then you change to rope a dope. You move to the right, to the left. You use various strategies. At the end of the day, you will meet your goal in Jesus' mighty name. So, I'm talking about tips. You need to study. You need to be prepared. The Bible says that study to show yourself approved. Marriage is a project. Because if you get the wrong woman or the wrong man, oh my God, it's going to be worse than hell. May that not be your portion in Jesus' mighty name. So, you need to be prepared. On the night I met my wife in 1980, I was prepared. I was in my best attire, green, green. I brushed my bushy owl at my brow so I could zero in. And the way I walk, left leg forward first. Amen? And before I went to the party, I listened to, I watched the, the movie Gone with the Wind with Clark Gable. I crammed the way they were talking to women. So, I mean, you need to read wide. Amen? It's important. So, when I got there and uh, everybody was saying, excuse me, dance, excuse me, dance, excuse, 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 excuse. And of course, my sweetheart had said no to a lot of people. The story is in the book. When I got there, I knew I needed to be different. She had said no to a lot of people. And in those days, if you advance, they say no, you can't go back. So you just be on the floor there, amen? Or else your, your friends will laugh at you. So I got to her and said, I didn't say excuse me. I just said, can I thank you for this dance? I looked up because that was different, amen? And I got that from a movie. So go and study, amen? God will help you in Jesus Christ today. Praise the name of the Lord. People of God, even Jesus said in Luke 16, 8, he said, the children of this world are wiser than the children of light. The children of this world, they prepare. 
Most Christian men, they hold on to James 1.19 that you must be slow to speak. No. No, no, no. Adam was prepared. He had been naming animals. He was creating. So when he saw Eve, he said, whoa, man. You know, that was a creative word. He didn't say, wow, the wow of man. That is creative, amen? Study, and God will help you in Jesus' mighty name. Be nice and full of smiles. Be well groomed, speak well. Because you might never get a second chance. Amen. Be bold, confident, and patient. You can read my story, you know, in my book. You must be tenacious. If you like the person, don't stalk her. If he shows you red light, hey, that is red light. If it's amber, then you can still use the rope or dope. Amen. You know, Elijah had another servant. He told that servant, in 1 Kings 19 3, it says, Sit down here in Beersheba. And that one sat down. If you go to Beersheba today, you still see that servant sitting there. But not so Elisha. He says, Sit down. Say, No, never. Sit down. No, I'm focused. I'm focused. Must be double portion anointing. People of God, I prophesy into your life that you will be tenacious. When you set a goal, you will achieve it in Jesus' mighty name. Look, you need to remember the eagle. The eagle, the female eagle, will fly 10,000 feet. And drop a twig. And anyone that is chasing her must go down and catch it and bring it up again. She will drop it about five times. If you give up, then you are not worthy. So, my prayer is that God will help every one of us in Jesus' mighty name. Don't be brash. Don't be bossy. Be cultured. Amen? You must have knowledge. Don't be too casual about it. Build friendship first. Then it will move to courtship. People of God, when you go out, speak from your heart. Be authentic. Avoid the line the Lord says, You are my wife. It will not work. Amen? It works for more. Hey, but for most, you can't just, God has to speak to me first. Amen? So, a good sense of humor, you know, and, and don't, 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 don't say, I saw a vision, I, I, I had a dream, or you say, what's your WhatsApp, how old are you? Don't ask those questions on your first date, amen? People of God, when you go out for dinner or lunch, you must pay the bill, it's your first date, amen? And you must always have a clean appearance. Don't forget your mouthwash. It is key. Amen? You must exhibit good manners. When you are opening the door, you open the door for her. You let her go in first. Amen? And you say, after you. You don't say, pass or come out. No, that will not work. Amen? Hallelujah. When you are eating, don't put your mouth close to the plate as if you want to you want to swallow the plate. Eh? And when you finish, you put your cutlery in the right place. And don't wipe the plate clean. Leave some little food. Amen? On the plate. Amen? Hallelujah. When you are seated and a woman is coming, even if it's not your, any woman, you must stand up as a man. Don't sit down and do like that. You must stand up. Amen? You must. Amen? Hallelujah. Now, when you are speaking, don't speak with food full in your mouth. No, 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 don't speak like that. And when you laugh at a dinner table, don't laugh in vernacular. <laughs> no. Hey, you are royalty. You are a king. When, when you want to laugh, I mean, look at how the the king and the, the queen of England, when they want to wave, eh, no, they do like this. You are royalty. Say, I'm royalty. Uh -huh, now, why you want to laugh? You say, eh, 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 no. Ah! no, God will deliver us in Jesus' mighty name. 
praise the name of the Lord. And when you go on that first day, take note of the things she likes. If it's vanilla ice cream, you note it. So when next you go, you will order for oh, give her vanilla ice cream, give her coke, give her. So she, ah, this guy is taking good notice of me. Amen. Those are strategies. Your phone must be placed on silent. Don't talk all about yourself. Amen. Be authentic. Be smart. Be intelligent. Don't be full of yourself. Amen. Just God will help you in Jesus' mighty name. Why men are afraid of making the move? Sometimes they are intimidated by the woman, amen. Maybe her parents or whatever, or her addiction, amen, her hallelujah, or lack of confidence, or they just did not prepare. I pray that you are prepared today in Jesus' mighty name. Now, you need to avoid time wasters. Some people are time wasters. They will waste your life. They, they are not marrying you. And for men, please, you need to know that some women also are time wasters. They will just send you on errand, errand, errand. Babo Konais, eh? Bewudani, just they, they'll just be using you. Amen? We don't want too long a courtship. You are cutting for five years. What are you doing? These are the end times. The trumpet is already in the mouth of the angel. Eh? Hallelujah. And people of God, you need to know that they will not come with a flimsy excuse. Oh, my mother doesn't like you. I know that. After, you know, and they ne they're never proud of you. They don't take you to the pastor to introduce you. Amen. And, and, and they, they always have excuses to be with you. Amen. They are selfish. Amen. They are shifty. They are liars. You get more tips from the book. People of God, God will deliver us from time wasters in Jesus' mighty name. You need to have a good self-esteem as a woman. Be proud of yourself. Amen? No one will push you here and there. God will deliver us from time wasters in Jesus' mighty name. One thing you need to know, don't force yourself on a man. It's wrong. Don't force it. That's what happened to Leah. And all throughout her life, she was trying to be nice to the man, whether one day she will love me. No, 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 no. Your own man and pursue you. Amen? God will deliver us in Jesus' mighty name. You know, what you look like right now really doesn't matter. Like I said, many of us, we don't look like this. Amen? Even if you don't say it, I know I'm not bad looking. Amen? But I wasn't always like this. There is one of our brothers. They will show you the picture. How he was then and how he is now. Amen? Praise the name of the Lord. Aha! Pray. So there is hope for a tree. Amen. Hallelujah. And for men, God says we are incomplete without a woman. You need a woman. Men say, I need a wife. You need it. You can't be complete. Now let's celebrate those ribs that are going to complete us. Amen. Let's clap for the women. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I have a bit about online connection, but hey. If you, if you join Connect now, you will, you will know how to speak, what to say when you are online. Your typing and your whatever, you know, you mustn't make mistakes, you know, there and all that. Or uh, it will be a put off. Amen. Uh, and of course, you don't have to say hello. You know, be creative. In, you can greet in Spanish. Hola. French. Bonjour. German. Guten Tag. Italian. Salve. Chinese. Ni <laughs> Portuguese. Hola. Hola. Japanese konnichiwa. You know, when you come out like that, the lady with the uh, this one is different too. Amen? Hallelujah. God will help us in Jesus' mighty name. But if you want more, please join Connect Now. And, and I just want to tell you the success story of Connect Now. We launched it in November 2021. Total registrants, 4,300 in one year. Right now, from January to now, 1,500 uh, people have joined. We have had 10 weddings to the glory of God. And 54 people ships, amen. All just slightly above one year. We are joining with Connect Now Europe, Connect Now Canada, Connect Now the Americas, amen. So if you've been dreaming of Japan, amen, <laughs> and marrying somebody, this is a platform. Let's clap for Jesus, amen. Hallelujah. Now, hey, the next thing, KYP. 
If you go to a bank, they say, know your customer. You must know your partner. What does he say? You must ask questions. We don't have time, but I have almost 300 questions. And there's some questions that are important. I'm sure they've told you, you know, there's some medical questions you need to ask and find out whether there are untimely deaths and things like that. Your parents will do that for you. Amen. History of witchcraft. Amen. Uh, the genotype and all, all those things, they are important. Amen. Uh, are they born again? Uh, uh, are they, you know, um, on the same uh, page as you? You have spiritual questions. Uh, joyful. Did you have a joyful um, childhood? Are your parents still together? You know, can you pray in tongues? Are, are you baptized in, in immersion? There are lifestyle questions. You know, uh, what are your likes? Where do you hang out? What are your dislikes? You need to ask questions. Don't just go into it. Then questions about personality. What are your temperaments? Amen. Are you an introvert, an extrovert? There are so many questions. What is your dream job? Where are you taking? What's your plan for yourself in the next five years? Amen. Where do you want to live? Amen. How do you describe a good spouse? You know, do you want children? How many children? Some people want about nine children. Amen. Hallelujah. So you have to discuss all those things. Are you very, very cultural? Amen. Do you like over meals? There are so many questions. You find out that many people that are married, I'm going to the third point now. Many people that are married, you know, they just leave the marriages. They don't last. They say, I can't hack it, and they just leave. And so why are young people's marriages troubled? Lack of closeness, lack of trust and honesty. One person domineering over domination from one side, cheating on one's partner. Amen. Poor or concealed financial situations. You make money, you are not telling your wife. You are passwording your phone. What are you hiding? The Bible says, naked but not ashamed. Then, in some places, it's the parents. They get too much involved. Then, some people are just dirty. You know? Anywhere and all that. And you know that your partner, you know, is very neat and all that. And that causes stress all the time. Of course, there are ways to do it. You just pick up after them. But you two, try now. Amen? And then, misunderstanding and not listening. Miscommunication is the root of 90% of breakups. Instead of listening to understand what the person is saying, you are listening to reply. So you are underlining the note, I will reply. You say, so it never ends. My prayer is that God will help us in Jesus' mighty name. And for some people, like I said, is the intervention of the parents. Why are they putting pressure on you? They want grandchild. They want this. They want, uh, uh, you know, time is going and all that. You know, God will help us in Jesus' mighty name. Pressure. Then there are cracks in the marriages. There are side chicks. It shouldn't be in a Christian marriage. Amen. And you marry someone that you don't know because they push you or somebody that is not too mature. God must deliver us in Jesus' mighty name. So, because of my time, I'll take the last point. Amen. For those that are married, we hear that some people, they want to marry. Some people that are married, they want to get out. There's no getting out. You are there forever. And that's why you must shine your eye before you enter. Amen. Now, how can you keep the wow in your marriage? One thing we need to realize is that Paul says in Ephesians 5.32, he says marriage is a mystery. And mystery means something puzzling, something complex, a closed book, not easily understood. We need to know that. So don't just rush in. It's a mystery. You need help. Look, one plus one is two. But in marriage, one plus one is one. It's a mystery now. That's why you need God. You need God to help 
you. That's why Solomon had problems after 1,000 women. It is a mystery. And God must help you. The Bible says that we must deal with the women with knowledge. Study your wife. First Peter 3, 7. It says likewise, you husband, dwell with them according to knowledge. If a woman says, I have nothing to wear for a party, you go to her closet, she has a lot of clothes. What is she telling you? She's telling you, I have to buy something new. So you need to understand them. You need to study them. They are different from men. So you need to dwell with the women with sense. And remember, for better, for worse. Some people, it's only the better they want. Uh, the worse will come now, but you must stay in and the grace of God will be more than sufficient for you in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody wrote something. It says, for a woman, give her an idea. And she'll give you a plan. Give her a house. She'll give you a home. Give her trouble. And she'll give you hell. Good measure. Press down. Shaking together. Running over. She will dish it out to you. Me, I respect women. Oh. I respect women. And maybe because of all this wahala. That's why there is no marriage in heaven. So they don't want you to go and scatter heaven. You know, uh, at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Amen. Some of us will say that, hey, how come we never saw our parents fight? We never saw. It's not that they didn't have altercations or challenges. But, you know, Proverbs 24, 3, it says it is possible to build a home through skillful and godly wisdom and understanding. You need to study, read about it. And remember, love covers a multitude of sins. You need to be a forgiver to stay in marriage. Christ says we must forgive 70 times, 70 times a day. And you must keep no records of wrong. And that's how you said the same thing last week and you did the same thing last month. No, 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 no. If we follow these scriptures, we will survive. Oh, we will survive. Amen. And then most people you see, marriage is like a garden. You need to tend the garden. Take care of your garden. A lot of people take care of their careers, invest in their careers, and do not invest in their marriage. You need to invest in your marriage because if you don't have a solid marriage, it will affect every other thing. My prayer is that for those that are married, God will give you a solid marriage in Jesus' mighty name. Remember Psalm 127.1. It says, except the Lord builds. So you can't build. You have to allow the Lord to build. And the Lord does not build shacks. He builds to last. He builds mansions. So for those that are having problems in their marriages, please step aside and ask God to take over. He will build a glorious marriage for you that will last and last and last and be fruitful in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, people of God, the foundations must be solid. And the only foundation we have is our Lord and Master Jesus Christ. So build and allow him to build and your foundation will stand. Now, that mystery of marriage, if you read on that scripture, that Ephesians 5, is solved. Paul says, if you want your marriage to succeed, just look at the relationship between Christ and the church. How does Christ relate to us? He valued us. He died for us. He went out of his way for us. You need to express love. Love is an internal passion that needs to be expressed. The Bible says, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed. For God so loved the world that he gave. That must be action. Don't tell your wife, I love you today. No gift, no love you, no give, no present. Christmas, I love you, no. The next time you open, the, by the time you say, I'll show you, 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 keep your love to yourself. You must express love. Amen? And remember, a soft answer turns away wrath. There was a stingy man, you know, who, who, um, who, uh, the wife asked for money. But 
because he was stingy, he said, get away, you harlot. Naturally, fight should have started. But the wife, being a wise woman, said, yes, I know I'm a harlot. But this harlot has just one customer and is a very stingy man. Bring the money, Job. That's how the man laughed and collected the money. So a soft answer can turn away wrath. Love and respect. You must respect. A woman needs love. A man needs respect. Don't take each other for granted. Now that you are married, you that were looking nice, now, no more nighty. And sheds on diet. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not nice. And you, as a man, you wake up in the morning, instead of wearing pyjamas, wrapper and twin stick in your mouth. No, it's not going to work. Amen? So we must not take each other for granted. One most important thing, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 7, 5, it says, do not defraud of yourself of intimacy. is fraud. Intimacy. Many marriages crash because of lack of intimacy. Some have not taught themselves for years. And that's a problem. Lack of intimacy. And is a fraudulent of friend. The Bible says defraud not. EFCC will come after you. It's a criminal offense. Amen? Somebody that, uh, somebody that you know, went to the American Embassy. When, you know, you write male or female. So they say sex. Instead of writing male or female, he wrote not enough. Because really dealt with him. He didn't know that you're supposed to write male. He wrote not enough. God will deliver us in Jesus' mighty name. People of God, be creative. Then one thing that has worked for us, pet names. Jesus loved names. He called Peter the rock. Not Simon that is shaky. Sarah called Abraham Lord. Solomon called Abishak, uh, Abishak uh, his wife, love. That's why, you know, if you call somebody sugar, it will always be sweet. Because the Bible says that whatever Adam named the, the, the animal, that is what it is. Amen? There is power in your tongue. The power of death and life lies in your tongue. So, what works for us, like for me, I call my sweetheart sugar baby, and she's always sweet. I call her hot chocolate. I call her sweetie pie. Choo-choo. Milo. Cutie Patito, as just say nice Betito. But you get your answer, Ade, Mama. No, 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 no. Stop all that and call them nice things. Amen. And lavish her with praise. I will kill two Goliaths for you. If all the trees are in the forest are pen and all the water in the ocean is ink, it is not sufficient for me to express my love for you. Amen. You tell her that her mind is blown. Amen. People of God, the last thing I want to talk about, signs of termites infested relationship. So, Psalms of Solomon 2.15. It says, there are little foxes. When it's about to rain, Jesus said, you will know. Because the cloud will be, you know, the, you will know it's going to rain. So when your marriage is having problems, you need to nip it in the bud. And there are some signs. When you begin to use harsh words for each other, the termites are eating. When you stop opening the door for the wife and you say, enter, no, that's a problem. When couples start sleeping in separate rooms, there is a problem. When you stop praying together, that's a problem. When you stop kissing your wife in the morning before you go to work, there is a problem. When you stay late at work, there is a problem. When you hide your phone and password it, there is a problem. You're supposed to remain friends. So when you see these things, there is a problem. So finally, my prayer is that with some of these tips, God will help you to build a solid relationship. But let me introduce you to the one who can land you the bone of your bone and the flesh of your flesh. The spouse of your dreams and give you a solid relationship. This man is not just loving, but he's love himself. 
He's also, he also has a miracle touch in the field of medicine. He's also an incredible therapist. After a session, broken hearts are made whole and the captives are set free. You may ask, what is he like? Well, I know he comes from a very good family. He is indeed royalty. He's so handsome, he's called the fairest of 10,000. He is faithful and he has promised never to leave you nor forsake you. He has pledged to be with you to the end of time. Is he romantic? Ah. He has written the longest love letter in history. 66 love he has written. Hundreds of pages. Does he have deep pockets? Yes. The cattle on a thousand hills belong to him. All the gold, the silver belong to him. Is he famous? Yes. His fame transcends boundaries and generations. His name is what? Jesus. And I pray that as you embrace him, if you embrace him today, he will lead you aright in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you.